every Who in the movie like Christmas a lot? But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have found that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the food. Staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. Not for he knew every who down in Whoville is now busy hanging mistletoe wreaths. And they're hanging their stocking. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically. Then here. he growled with his grinchy fingers, nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. But tomorrow he knew. All the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then... All the noise, all the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise. Noise, noise, noise. <laughs> then the booze young and old would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast. Feast, feast, feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand. And the Who's would start singing. They'd sing. And they'd sing. And they sing. 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 And the more the Grinch thought of this new Christmas thing. The more the Grinch thought. I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've been up with this now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? Then the Grinch, then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great, great trick. In his coat, in his hat, I'm just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since, since reindeer are scarce, there is none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make them instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and tied a horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sack on a ramshackle sleigh. And he hit up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the who's lay snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one. The old Grinchy cross hissed. And he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney in rather tight pin. But if Santa could do it, so can the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his out, head out of the fireplace blue where the little blue stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and swung with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present. Pop guns! And bicycles! Roller skates! Drums! Checkerboards! Tricycles! Pop coins! And plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nibbly stuck all the bags one by up up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who's pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why? That 
Crunchy even took their last can of Cool Hash. And then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, the Grinch. I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. When he heard the small sounds like the cool they dug. And he turned around fast and he saw a small who. Cindy Lou who. Who is not more too. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny little daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking a Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he saw up a lot. And he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little Todd? He thinks Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree, or a light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. And he patted her head, and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. And when Sandy Lou, who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On the walls he left nothing but some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that was he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses. Leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn. All the who's still a bed. All the who's still snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents. The ribbons. The wrappings. The towel. And the tinsel. The swimming. The trappings. 3,000 feet up. Up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Something he haven't before. Maybe Christmas. He thought. Doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas. Perhaps. Needs a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, from Prince's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. He bought, and he brought back the presents and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch called the world's feast. The Grinch had a 